Hey everyone, this is Lucky70X. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode, we salvaged all of the salvages, got all the treasure maps. And uh, if you look at our collection screen here, we also have 25 minutes on our clock, which means we can now go for the perfect clear time of 25 minutes, because it's the amount of time you have left, not the amount of time taken. So basically zero time on the actual hourglass spent. It's not the easiest thing to pull off in the world. The uh, the first nine floors you have a little bit of wiggle room for, but the last three are very unforgiving. So this is going to be a really fun challenge that I'm looking forward to going to here. We're going to go through the entire thing from start to finish and go for the perfect time. Are you ready, guys? There's going to be tactics. There's going to be great spin attacks. There's going to be drama, intrigue, everything you're looking forward to in a challenge. Begin the Phantom Hourglass Temple of the Ocean King speedrun. Step one, Great Spin Attack is your friend, because it saves, saves a lot of time running around. We actually can get to this floor in a zero seconds. Next step, ready your Bomb Chew, because Bomb Chews are also your friend. Bring yourself up here, ready your Bomb Chew, they're faster than bombs. You, don't, you, you see this wall here? We don't care, because the Bomb Chew takes care of the wall, and that's what we want to see. Next step, head over here once again. Great spin attack is your friend. Easily get up here, grab the key, save time. Great spin attack, still your friend. We're gonna be doing a lot of this great spin attacking from position to position. It saves a lot of time, especially if you do not get stunned. The other tactic, using doors, treasure chests, other objects to negate your, your great spin attack stun time and allow you to uh, not get stunned in an open area. Always the best tactic. Oop, I didn't mean to alert you, but that actually kind of works on my favor because I can kill you from here. Which, uh, kind of worked out nicely, so... Go ahead, great spin, spin attack over here. Stun yourself on the switch. Go over here, hit the switch. Hit the other switch. Get the key to spawn. Bomb shoes, once again your best friend. While the bomb shoes going, ready your grapple hook. Run over here, switch, cutscene. And grapple. Get the key, and then uh, the great spin attack to the door. Hopefully, if we can actually time this properly, stun herself on the door, run over here, hit this, stay safe, bomb chew. So you can see the tactic that we're going to be kind of going throughout this game is uh, a lot of basically great spin attacking from place to place, getting a little bit of extra time, going over here, stun yourself on the door, open the key. As you can see, just speedrun tactics. Very, very handy. It's really cool to speedrun this temple, actually. As much as people despise this temple in terms of speedrunning it, it's actually pretty awesome. So we're going to actually take our time this time. Uh, let this guy come out, go ahead and uh, show up here. In case you're wondering, by the way, hammer versus... Uh... Oh, it does stun them. A big hammer actually does stun the phantoms. Well, that's actually worth noticing, then, because uh, that's kind of handy. Anyway, you can stun yourself by getting the key here. Um, which will allow us to not get stunned by that, and we get the key. Great spin attack up here. Stun yourself in the torch. Get the time. Go ahead. Grapple across. And boosh! Through the first three floors. Time a little off on the clock. Still 25 minutes. And that's how it works. Like I said, you have a lot of leeway time. You've already seen I could spend an extra 20 seconds. And still have been at this point, so... That was, the guy was trickier to kill than I would have liked, but that's okay. Uh, so go over here, stun this. Uh, I'm not gonna really necessarily risk Great Spin Attack. Actually, I'm gonna Great Spin Attack at this point, though, because I don't want this guy to get in the way. Hit this point, stay in here, stay safe, friends. And uh, from here, Bomb Chew will be your new king, because from here you can Bomb Chew both places we need a Bomb Chew without wasting any seconds on the clock, which is what I want to see here. So, do that, do this, and then what we're going to try to do here, actually, is if I can get the- Ah, oh, the cutscene screwed me over. That's okay, because it's also going to also going to negate the stun time, because I'm in a situation where it doesn't matter. And uh, from here, you know what, I think the best tactic here would be Great Spin Attack over into this one. Probably could have made it all the way from quite a, a, a fair distance, but didn't necessarily matter. Stun on the, the on the door, and look at that. We can keep going once again. So as you can see, tactics here, very nice. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, and spin attack once again. Just, okay, I actually couldn't. I was, I was hoping I could actually hit the chest. Apparently, doesn't great spin attack in there does not actually 
end up being extremely helpful. But that's okay, because we're gonna great smith attack one more time. Hit this, grab the, the money. We're gonna get stunned here, that's okay, because we're gonna actually head around this way. Oh, no, 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 do not make me have to wiggle. Get in the thing, okay. Wasted pretty much a bare minimal of time there. Uh, make sure you get away from that second Phantom's line of sight, because he can catch you, and you do not want to be caught by Phantoms. They will cut out your time. And even though, like I said, you have a ton of wiggle room for the first nine floors, I'm trying to be as good as possible here. And as you see, we've now done the first six floors in 13 seconds. Yeah. Take that. How about that for a halfway point? Which, by the way, there's no time in this halfway point. Makes sense, because it's a halfway point. It locks the time the moment you get in here, so it wouldn't give you extra time. But look at that! 13 seconds only to get through the first six floors of the Temple of the Ocean King. Ready your grapple hook here? These next few floors have a ton of leeway room because, if you remember, there's those four ghost things that uh, each of them drop 30 seconds every time you uh, you do this. Now, we're not going to grapple across yet. If you look at the top screen, we're... we're Sure. Uh, we're waiting for that thing to start heading this way, so we can go over here, grab the time. Actually, okay. Oh, I think I screwed the time in this. That's okay. I can actually, uh... That thing's gonna start going way too late. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not gonna matter anyway, so just grab the extra time. Uh, you wanna try to time it so you can grab the time, grab the crystal, and then make it across here. Like I said, it's a, it's not really relevant, though, because we have so much time on the clock already that uh, once you head through this key here, you, uh, which don't forget, if you do the halfway point, you can't use this key. Not that it matters whether or not you have the key or not, using the halfway point still works because, um, basically, you don't need the extra... I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this here, bomb chew over here, by the way, because uh, you can bomb chew the thing that you need to bomb chew from here in a safe zone. Um, but it doesn't really matter because you get so much time in the in the floor after this because of all those ghost guys that uh, you pretty much have an extra two and a half minutes of time to collect in that room. So, wow, that I missed. Let's try that again. But uh, you don't have to really worry too much about. I mean, you have enough time to not have to use the key and still be perfectly fine during the time. So. I'm only doing this- Hey! He's stealing my gem! Hang on a second! Mister! You know you have to die now. You don't do that, buddy. You don't steal a guy's gem. It's rude. But as you can see, we're now on the floor that gives us an extra two and a half minutes. We're three seconds on the clock. Which means we can pretty much waste about two minutes in here if we need to. Not that I plan to. So try your best not to get caught. Uh, what we're going to do is lure this guy. Uh, just save some time and lure him over to a red pot that we already had that is going to be over here, so go ahead and have him follow this way, break the pot, get into safety. That was a little closer comfort there, but you want to make sure you don't have him uh, get distracted and lose you, so... That caused a chest to spawn down there. Like I said, we have so much extra time that we may as well pick up the chest, so... I know this guy's here, and I'm a little concerned about this, but... Basically every 30 seconds, when you have 30 seconds left in the clock, you can go ahead and just kill one of these guys to get their, their time, essentially. Which we're going to do, so... The moment he... Hey! I broke a pot that shockwave accidentally, which is kind of hilarious. But there is one guy right here, so we can go ahead and just kill him with the triangle gem of all things. Because insults! And you know what? I have the extra time, we're just gonna go ahead and murder one of these guys and... Great spin attack our way down here, and go ahead and just get the um, the extra ship part because you know what? As long as you're speed running, may as well get a battle wheel. Sure, a battle wheel. Okay, we're gonna just. There we go. I kind of had to set the spin attack outside, which is less than ideal, but it saves a little bit of time still. Head over here, grab the uh, the score pedestal. I know there's still two guys left here. That's okay. We're, we can kill one of those. To grab a little extra time. Actually, we don't even need to grab them because there's 30 seconds in the uh, the break room point, so we technically don't even need to kill these guys. But you know what? I don't like the way they smell. Oh, he's hidden in a wall. Oh, you can't do that. That's cheating. There we go. Now you die. Boosh. Extra time. And look at that. Just like that, guys. Heading into the final three floors of 25 minutes, which you want to be make sure 100% that you get into the last three floors of 25 minutes because the last. Three floors, four floors, whatever, are by far the toughest. This is where, this is where every all the this is where everything starts to matter here. We need to have absolute perfection on these last three floors for the speed run to work out. So uh, I don't know if this actually if, if 
they count half seconds or not, but now we're definitely at max time right now. We're perfect so far. But the last three floors have to be crucial, so every single step has to matter here. The Phantom's movements, everything has to matter. The last two floors especially are extremely difficult to pull this off with. So, first step, we do that. Second step, great spin attack over here. Next step, uh, I'm gonna let the Phantom walk down a bit still. This, sh that should be good enough. So the, let, let the Phantom walk down here. We're not gonna actually get the key on the way there, but that red pot. That red pot's gonna be crucial. We're gonna great spin attack down here. Hit the red pot. Prepare your boomerang, because you can just go ahead and boomerang while you're boomerang while you're in here to get the key. So uh, we now have an invisible key in our heads once again in a wall because Link likes to do that. And uh, then from here, run over here, quickly grapple across, hop up here, grapple across, and into the the keyhole. So with that, we've completed the first floor in 9 seconds. I mean, you have about 20 seconds of leeway here because there is actually... I can more like 15 seconds because there is actually a 30-second uh, a clock here that we're going to grab the 30 seconds, head back in here, go into safe zone, great spin attack ourselves across this way again, and into the door. 3 seconds on the clock is about what you're aiming for to make this work out because this room, you need as much time as humanly possible to have a chance here. So hammer yourself across... Great spin attack. Get into the safe zone, which we did. And then I uh, can't unfortunately great spin attack from here because uh, unfortunately it doesn't work out, but roll yourself over here, grab the force gem, and this is the point where you want to be extra careful. This is where I screw up the most. Because uh, first of all, let this guy get the force gem so you can kill him off. Buddy, you die, thank you. And now watch the bo watch the top screen here because we want to make sure that phantom right there does not catch us. So once he starts heading to the right here, we're going to start making our move because by the time we complete our move, he'll have gotten out of the way pretty much. Um, so go ahead and prepare your hammer. What? He actually heard us through the thing. Okay, well, you know what? In the end, this doesn't work out too poorly. We can just hide in a safe zone and it doesn't really detract det det too much. In fact, uh, except the fact that I kind of have to go slow, so now I have to kind of make sure this phantom... I have to let this phantom just kind of leave for now, because if he hears you have... I guess I, guess I still time that poorly. You really want him to just be way out of the way there, but it's really hard to get past that phantom without him hearing you and killing you afterwards, which is not what you want. So we're just let him walk down a bit. Okay, start making a move from here. Grab the force gem, and we're going to want to get this force gem into here safely. Which we did. Now we're gonna wait for this phantom to come by again, and uh, when he does, we will go ahead and basically uh, kill him. Get him out of the way, because we don't like him, and that's okay. So we want to try to have about 15 seconds on the clock. We're actually gonna lure him over here using the hammer, in fact, just to get the jump on him, get the force gem pretty much as close to here as possible, and what we're going to do is we're going to then take this force gem, put it into the thing to spawn one of the first guys, uh, just so you'll have a little bit of extra time to sort of get into position here. Uh, so that guy has spawned. Actually, you know what? It'd be better to even get both of them going, because that way both of them will get out of that area where they're safe and get more into a zone where we can then spin attack them and kill them. Because now, as you can see, we do need time on the clock, so as much time as we can get, the better. Uh, from here, uh, I don't know if I can great spin attack to the safe zone, but I'm going to try. Oh, we can make it. Okay. So, great spin tack your way into safety. We're going to lure this ghost actually over here because at this point, I'm going to shockwave kill him. Run out, grab the time, run back in. We have about 17 seconds to complete this next section because we have 30 seconds on the clock with the guy that's pretty much at the safe zone right now. Uh, so, as long as he doesn't hit us, we should actually be okay. Uh, run up, kill this phantom, grab the force gem, and then make your way over to safety and we just have to evade this guy over here which is nice though because he's gonna be pretty much just as long as he doesn't try to hit us from here which you've avoided him he is extremely actually this is perfect though because he's extremely nearby you cannot have more a more ideal situation than this we have five seconds to basically kill him and get his time in order to enter the last floor with 25 minutes on the clock which is what your your goal is here except he's kind of in the safe zone now 
Okay, what I'm going to do here... I'm gonna head over here, stun myself on this, kill him, get the 30 seconds, and okay, one second on the clock, I can make this work still. So not necessarily ideal, but not terrible as well. The three phantoms have already spawned in the center, so what we want to do, run over here, grab this, run down here, jump down here, as soon as this cutscene's gone, throw the pot into a safe and make it into a safe zone. You want the safe zone to be roughly around here. So get into the safe zone, and then start your phantom killing. We have to kill these phantoms in such a way that we have about tw like four, 2440 is kind of our goal here, if not less. So just kind of hop your way over here, and then take advantage of the great spin attack. Spin attack, get yourself into the safe zone, make sure you stay stunned in the safe zone. And then uh, we just kind of repeat the process for all three of these phantom batches, and then we need to go run over to where the uh, the warp back is, get the 30 second pot, break the 30 second pot right in front of the entrance way, grab it as we go through the doorway, and we will have 25 minutes on the clock. So we're almost there. The reason this is such a good spot for the for your uh, thing is the first phantom literally patrols right through you. You can then crap. That's okay. You can just kill him on the way out, and then as soon as this one moves this way, move in. It's a great spin attack. Get back into the safe zone, and uh, the third batch of phantoms await. But it's pretty much the same pattern every time. Kill the one as he passes through you, jump attack the second one, great spin attack the third one. Works like a charm every time. I really love doing the speedrun here. It's really cool how it ends up working out. It has to be so deliciously precise, but it works. So kill this guy as he passes through. Jump attack that guy. I hate that sometimes it does a shockwave. Wait for this guy to start turning around. The moment he does. Oh, well, okay, yeah, this works too. Because I can still kill him from here. From the country. I mean, as long as you get hit, just run back to the safe zone, let him come over to you. You can easily get a kill on him anyway. Either way, it works out. So now the entrance is open. Our only goal at this point is to essentially run as fast as we can to this thing, grab it, come down, throw it right in th Don't go through the doorway! Oh no! I've messed everything up! Because it doesn't count because it's still on the collection screen. You have to break it before you go through the doorway. Damn it! Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut... Actually, every time you complete the, the Temple of the Ocean King, by the way, you do get two chip parts every time. So it's kind of nice. Uh, what I'm going to do though, is I'm just going to cut, do it again, and show off that ending with it happening properly this time. So basically if you want to redo, just head over this way. Every time the bridge will run out, but you can just go through the warp and uh, I have 25 minutes on the clock, but it doesn't count because you have to hit before you go to the doorway because that's when it registers the time. I went through the- I meant to throw it, I didn't throw it, and I screwed up. I- oh, I had six seconds there! I panicked. Panicked. And I can also just use the halfway warp anyway to save time, uh, because you have so much time, as you can see in that last part in the- in, on floor nine of all the ghosty ghosts, that you can, uh, get away with not having the key. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut until I can get this properly, so, uh, one second, I'll show this off the proper way in just a sec. You know, as long as we're here, another pillar handrail, why not? I mean, as long as I've screwed up once, I might as well get some extra treasures out of it, right? Alright. Let's do this one correctly this time. As you can see, I have even better time on the clock right now, I think, so... This time, I'm just not gonna panic, and we're gonna do this properly at the proper time. And all will be well. Kill you. As you can see, I have an even better vantage point with my safe zone this time. It's pretty much as perfect as it can get. You know, I wonder if I can just stun this guy from here and then loop, deep, loop around like that as well. So the hammer stun also is kind of useful if you because you can stun them with a fully charged hammer like that. So uh, something to keep in mind. And from here, we just uh, what if the green of the great spin attack? Not necessarily the most ideal thing in the world because you get stunned, but. It also saves time getting up here, so it doesn't really matter either way. We're gonna throw it there this time, go in, and that's how you do a perfect time right there. 25 minutes on the clock, not bringing the pot in this time. If you look at our collection screen, we now have our best time at 25 minutes. Don't really get anything for doing that. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm gonna double check 
my research on that. And now we have the full ship set now, too. Because the ancient anchor was the one thing I was missing. Well, that's convenient. Uh, so we now have the full ship set. A parasol chimney as well, because why not? We'll show off all these ship sets uh, during the closing video as well. But uh, just like that, guys, we now have the full 25-minute perfect time. As perfect as you can get, really, on the clock. Like, like I said, you don't get anything for doing this, but uh, if you just want to have perfectionists on the clock there, uh, we can do that. We're going to head into the blue light, basically. And uh, I was thinking that this episode I could also sell all my treasures and stuff, because I mean, if you look in the collection, we have a lot of treasures and ship parts. We have a lot of things to sell for a lot of money, but uh, I'm actually thinking we'll just do that, uh, I guess. Oh, what the heck, we can get our max rupee count. No, don't want to do this, because as far as I'm aware, we're not going to get any more money anyway, because we're going to be pretty much going to go up those stairs next episode and beat the game. So I don't think we get much more money anyway, so let's go ahead and just get... If it's not a final rupee count, it's going to be pretty damn close to a final rupee count. So we're going to go ahead, sell off every excess ship part, and also get a chance to see every ship part we have. Because uh, this is going to be pretty much... The, those are the last ship parts we're going to be getting in the game, unless for some reason my research shows something I missed, which I'm going to double check that you don't get, like, golden parts or something from doing a perfect speed run, because I did have to do that from the halfway point. I'm not sure if that affects things or not, but, uh, going to double check that, because it's something I thought was a thing, and maybe, maybe that's what it is, but I'm going to double check that in between videos. From now, assume, if I don't say anything, then yeah, just, you don't get anything from doing a perfect run, so, except for the glory. So, these are probably the last shit parts we're going to get, so let's go ahead and sell everything that we have here. Every ex, every, uh, extra shit part and every treasure that we have, just to get a, we're gonna get a max, you know, our final rupee count of the game, basically. Just, just for fun. Just, just because we can. Let's throw this in the end of the video. Prepare ourselves the next episode to, uh, take on the final boss with a whole lot of money. See if we can max out 9999, probably can. So, uh, Sickle Anchor. So you can see all the parts we have as well. We have a lot of the parts, we were obviously missing quite a few. But uh, we have most of the anchors, we have... Uh, we're missing quite a few prows as well, but we have a decent collection of anchors at least. The hulls, the hull we definitely kind of had a redemption for, but even then we're still missing quite a few. So uh, there's that as well. Sell for 50 rupees. I mean, I could go to the Ho-Ho tribe and see if they have dark power loops and sell that for a bunch of money, but honestly, I kind of get the feeling we're going to hit 999 anyway, because for starters, we have a golden can to sell. That's like 1,500 rupees there. So we already sold one of those, and then uh, that's the only extra cannon we have. Fences. We've gotten quite a few of the exact same fences, and that's it. So I'm pretty sure the stone set's the only one we actually have the full set for. Which means uh, at some point, you know, I wouldn't be against showing off the uh, the full, you know... Uh, I, w I would not be against showing off the full... I can Well, I actually, I'm going to be showing off the full stone set at some point. I'm not sure if I have a full set of anything else. Definitely have the full set of the stone stuff. Not, like I said, not sure if I have everything else or not, but... Okay, that restful cabin's worth 1,500 rupees. Uh, we're gonna max out our money just by selling our ship parts. So maybe I won't be selling treasures, I might just be selling all the excess ship parts, because the excess ship parts are kind of pointless, although... Yeah, the wheels and the chimneys have nothing extra, so I guess we can sell off... a few of these. I'm gonna sell off as many as I can without, a. Uh... Actually, I'm just gonna sell off the Dark Pearl Loops till we're at, till we're at uh... Okay, it's not gonna take us some max rupees, but... Just for fun, we're gonna get ourselves max rupees, like I said. Because... We can. So these are worth 150 apiece. Nothing more, nothing less. I wonder if the, uh, if the Treasure Teller always has it in the order of, uh... The value, because I've just noticed it's in, it's in the order of how much things are worth, uh... Besides the regular Ring, obviously. I wonder if that's on purpose, or if that's... Like, if in other games, it's, they're all ordered in, the, in such a way that the most expensive stuff is first or not. Because it's weird that I my, all my things are... Because I'm pretty sure that, I mean, the things are differently, you know, valued at different... Uh, in different games, different things are valued differently. So, you know, Dark Pearl Loops could be 50 rupees in one person's game and 1,500 in another game. And 150 in a different game. So, I'm not sure exactly uh, how it works, per se. But it's kind of funny that mine, even if, if it's a coincidence or not, mine's in the order that uh, is actually worth the most. So I'm just gonna sell a few of these. I'm gonna leave myself, try to leave myself like five of every treasure here. 
or well, not every treasure. I don't have any pearl loops, unfortunately, but I have a pink coral at least. That's all that matters. So I'm just gonna get ourselves to max rupees before we end the episode because you know what? I'm crazy. Because if we're gonna go to a final boss, we may as well have the max rupees because we have that much money. It's a little absurd to be honest. How much money we actually? Okay, we're gonna have to sell a couple more dark pearl loops in order to get to max money, but. We're gonna be, we're gonna have to sell like three Dark Pearl Loops, and then we'll have five of all of the common treasures. On top of that, because why not, really, is the answer. I can't believe that we had a cup, two whole things that were worth 1,500 rupees to sell. Just, I mean, if you think about it, we have like an extra, what, 2,000 rupees on top of the max, which is gonna be hit right here? Because, yeah, the max is 9999. So we now have max rupees, max clear time, Life is good, basically. And we have a full stone set that we can show off at some point during the closing video. I'll actually end showing off the full stone ship. That'll be the ship we end off of on the closing video. But uh, we're gonna keep our mixed ship for now because we're gonna end the episode now. In the next episode, guys, the final boss awaits. We're gonna take on Bellum. Beldum, whatever the heck his name is. He's a Pokemon now, apparently. Um, and we're going to go ahead and beat the game. So the final episode of Phantom Hourglass coming to you guys next time. This is Lucky7DX signing out. Bye-bye.